नमस्ते सर नमस्ते जी सर सर वी वर डिस्कसिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड यस्टरडे नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते सभी को uh so with the yesterday's discussion that we had and uh, from the discussions that we are having so it's uh, very true that uh, when we uh, make a response of the self and uh, uh, and we can see that the response of the self and its fulfillment uh, is with the assumptions about the reality and the self has no choice in this matter so uh, when we talked about this coexistence of self and body and the way our uh, uh, the needs of both self and body are different but at the same time sometimes we come across certain situations uh, where we are not uh, able to uh, you know exactly find out uh, what could be uh, the uh, right way say for example uh, you know the need of the self is uh, to have uh, to have conti uh, continuity of happiness and uh, harmony and at the same time uh, we are uh, having a relationship between one self and the other self but many a times we see that even if this kind of a feeling we have but when we are trying to uh, express our respect and show our relationship with others it uh, doesn't it uh, i mean revert back in the same way so uh, despite all efforts but sometimes we are hurt by that Uh, so, uh, Bhai, I would just like to ask that what could be the probable solution? That uh, does uh, we know that the sanskar of the other person maybe uh, like uh, he needs to improve or his competence is not uh, uh, there. But uh, whatever. Uh, but this, uh, the like everything is there. We know that we have a relationship between one self and an another self. Then why this uh, feeling of uh, you know? Uh, hurt uh, that comes to us and it makes us sometimes in disharmony yeah so i was asking what is the source of happiness is it getting some favorable feeling from outside is it getting some favorable <clears throat> sensation from outside no or is it my own right understanding right feeling and right thought what is the source of happiness for me <laughs> yeah my right understanding and right thoughts of, yes so if it depend if it if my source of happiness is right understanding right feeling and right thought in me then it will not depend on the response or the reaction of the other yes but sometimes we have uh, like you know sometimes we have to uh, say uh, in connection we have to work with the other person like uh, we cannot avoid the other person and of course as you very rightly said that i have i have to have that right understanding and i do have because i have uh, eventually uh, found out that uh, most of the time i am in harmony it isn't that even uh, the reaction of the other doesn't uh, disturb me but uh, still sometimes i am disturbed i don't know why that happens yeah so the <clears throat> reason is very simple that most of the time i am happy on the basis of my right understanding my right feeling and right thought but yes. sometime because of some sanskar which gets activated in me because of the response or reaction of the other i am no more with my right understanding or right feeling my feeling has got disturbed by way of my own sanskar in <clears throat> response to the behavior of the other that is the behavior of the other has triggered some sanskar in me and i am going by that sanskar and according to that sanskar my expectation is that he should not behave like this right and if he is behaving like that then i get into that feeling of opposition with him <clears throat> yes right if that happens then i am unhappy so i am unhappy because of his behavior plus 
because of my own sanskar these two put together not so, only bhaiya, because of his behavior or her behavior yes so bhaiya is this a natural uh, thing or it is something unnatural see the way it is happening today it is natural or it seems to be natural okay okay we feel that okay you know we don't know how these sanskars have been accumulated but somehow i own them and according to those sanskars i have some expectation about the feeling from the other or the behavior of the other and this is not falling in line with that kind of feeling or behavior therefore it sounds very natural to me to get angry about it or get a feeling of opposition about it see but this is not natural in the right sense because when i have this wrong feeling i get unhappy yes so in that sense it is not natural but the way things are happening it seems to be natural yes so what we are saying that all these things are happening because we are not aware of ourselves we are not aware of our sanskar our feelings right and ultimately we do not have this right understanding right feeling and right thought in me therefore i get an act yes so what do i do till the behavior of the other person sets right at least i can be aware of myself right i can be aware of my sanskar i can evaluate my sanskar i can evaluate my feeling and make sure that they are in order yes and if i ensure that i can continue to be in a state of happiness despite the lack of right behavior from the other yes that's right uh bhaiya and sometimes in families also it happens supposing uh, like uh, i have few i have a relative and uh, so uh, they are going on very well but, uh, but i mean they were but now after a very long time like uh, they have a grown up uh, daughter and everything is there and now suddenly there is so much of uh, disruption that uh, they are uh, you know about to get divorced as well and it's a very uh, it's at a very later stage so actually i am all the time feeling that why this is happening like uh, why this has to happen at, at this time when everything was okay till now that is what we are saying right from the beginning everything is okay means we have the right understanding right feeling and right thought for yes. our you know living in this existence if yes. that happens thing, everything is not right something is right something is wrong and yes. what something is right is manageable right yes so we can manage the situation with that part which is right and we get stuck with that part which is not right okay yes. and whenever such situation comes then we get stuck till that situation comes it seems sounds okay yes yes so be a what could they probably do like what could be the solution solution ultimately that is what we are talking about the ultimate solution is that i have the right understanding and right feeling in me number 1 and i work for that and that is what we are doing Yes. number 2 i work to help the other to have the right understanding and right feeling and ultimately i work for everyone to have the right understanding and right feeling that is the solution yes yes but at this point of time probably they are not ready to listen maybe gradually it comes to them yes they are not ready to listen because they are not assured of our behavior Mm, yes, probably. 
So if I work on myself and if I, my behavior improves, then maybe they will, you know, be ready to listen to me. But there is a possibility. They may have some very, you know, big set of sanskar regarding me. So they may not be ready to listen at all. Or it may yes. take times, years. Right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, Daya. Thank you so much, Daya. Namaste. Namaste, namaste, namaste. So, Bhaiya, uh, there is one sloka, Sobhav jin kantiya nivadha svein karmana kartune chasyan mohat karisyasya basopitat. So, Sobhav is the thing that uh, uh, we are, we are, we are, uh, we have to do it due to uh, uh, my oh, habitual practices that I am doing and I try to get out of it. I am doing the sessions, sensations also, but a complete uh, uh, right understanding, uh, very, very difficult. So can, 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 can I, I, I want to uh, have a clarification between Sobhav and Sanskar. Uh, uh, how can I change my, this uh, uh, Sobhav, which I have, that after uh, sometimes I again come back square to the same situation where I started and the right understanding go jabi. So yeah. what should I do, Bhaiya? Oh, I, 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 sometimes I get... Um, uh, so I, I think Ganesh Bhaiya is the suitable person for explaining this. Please help me. Yeah, so... <clears throat> you know, when... We are using words from tradition or anywhere, you know, yes. other than the our present use. Yes. Then we have to be very clear about what reality it is talking about. Okay. Now here right. we are we have talked about sanskar. Yes. And sanskar for us means that we have some assumption about ourselves. But one. Then we have some assumption about the other person. Right? Right. Right. And these are called the sanskars. Oh, 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 oh. Correct. Correct. Bhaiya. Correct. Bhaiya. Okay. So I assume that I am a great person. And I assume that the other person is a fool. Right. So whenever I recall of this other person, uh. Instead of having a feeling of relationship, I feel have a feeling of opposition with him. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I got my answer. You can explain it, Bhaiya. Assumption for our self is perfectly okay, but assumptions for other self, another person that he is a fool. In initial stage, I assume this. Then how can I uh, have the right understanding? Correct, Bhaiya. Correct. Now, Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Let me complete. Yes. So when <clears throat> I have these assumptions, this is what we are calling a sanskar. Yes. Yes. Now, once our assumption has gone wrong, our decision for the feeling that we will have for the other person or other unit, that is likely to go wrong. Is that clear now? Right, right, Paya. Right, Paya. Uh, if that feeling goes wrong, okay, then I am likely to get into trouble with the other person. First, I will become unhappy. And then I am I'm, I'm likely to react. Now, if you look at this swabhav word which is used in Gita, this swabhav is used for the sanskar and the feeling born out of my sanskar. That is the meaning of swabhav there.
so different people have different sanskar and therefore based on their sanskar okay they are likely to respond or react is it clear i am saying that this sanskar and the response or reaction based on this sanskar is called the swabhav there ha 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 correct 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 now <laughs> the sense in which we are using swabhav is different ha. what we are saying is what is naturally acceptable to us is swabhav ha what is not naturally acceptable to us is not our swabhav ha 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 so if wrong sanskar is there it will generate a long feeling which is not swabhav according to us right bhaiya absolutely right we must understand what is meant by swabhav there and what is meant by swabhav here and if we understand both then we'll be able to you know clarify what is being said and what is the meaning of it okay so ultimately right, i have yeah. to, thank you bhaiya ultimately i have to work on my sanskar i have to set it right Mommy, yes. Yes. Namaste, bhaiya. Namaste, everyone. So, bhaiya, whenever uh, we are going, uh, we are imagining something, and uh, from the feeling of thought, then natural acceptance. Whenever we are moving uh, to the um, step of coexistence, then, um, bhaiya, I want to share with you uh, that how I think in a very small uh, situation. Say. Uh, bhaiya i am uh, providing assignment to, to the students and um, and uh, also uh, have a last date of submission of the assignment now it is a common thing that uh, whatever we uh, see is that that most of the students submitted it on the uh, last day and a few students also submitted before and uh, there are some students always who do not submit and also we have a certain few students who cannot submit but they interacted in masses that they have genuine problems and they could not submit on the day of the last uh, last date of submission so in that case whenever i feel uh, so i do not have any feeling of unhappiness or contradiction to those students who have not yet submitted the assignments but i make it a point that whenever they are go coming for submission they must understand that um, they are uh, why why they have done that Me means i make it a point that they have to understand their self discipline and that would be helpful in their later life and at the same time uh, i had the feeling that yes whenever they will go out of my cabin they will forget these things and but at some point of time when they will go up they will have a job then if whatever i have spoken to them if they remember it then i think i am successful i have a feeling of coexistence because if they do good then it would be good for the society for the self and for the nature as a whole so in that case is my is it a right way uh, moving from the step 1 to the step 7 bhaiya in the same situation we could had discussion with such students today the whole thing is so organized that we feel that we have no time to do that but it is useful because ultimately we want to convey to them that they have to be responsible or we have to be responsible yes that is the issue isn't it hmm. now are we able to convey this maybe not because uh, those students who do those things they um, they probably do the same thing again and again and those students who are always disciplined they maintain their self discipline yes so number one is that i keep my feeling in order the feeling of relationship with them that is one thing second thing is that i essentially want to convey you know certain 
important thing about life right so i hmm. must have some regular discussion with them i should develop a platform where i can call them i can sit with them i can discuss with them i can ask questions i can ask them to reflect over it and then respond now all those things we can do hmm. isn't it my experience with this students who are very irregular and indisciplined is that if we do this you know calling them sitting with them discussing with them Mm. offering some tea to them if you do mm. this discussion with them mm. most of them change very drastically mm. yes and that is a very long term change yes yes why and that is also we can feel that one also that feeling we have also there for the students who may be irregular in the first semester but in higher semester after mm, they do much good when they show good results and also they change much we have also seen that bhaiya yeah so ultimately the issue is that we have to develop that right understanding right feeling and right thought in them that is the mm -hmm. main issue mm -hmm. so we should work for it mm -hmm. one subject or the other subject is okay mm -hmm. So teaching one subject is an opportunity to communicate. Mm -hmm. That is how I would look at it. And if there are sixty students in my class, I can establish a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Right, and I can do very meaningful things, you know, for them by helping them to get aware of this fact that yes, they have to have this right understanding, right feeling, and right thought. Mm -hmm. Talk to them in any words. I am not saying use these words essentially, but mm -hmm. I must be clear that my responsibility is to share this. And if this happens, then it will help him in the job and it will help him in the life, right? Mm -hmm. The family and everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I must take out time for such discussion. and the feeling of coexistence uh, is this um, mean this way of thinking is the feeling of coexistence no bhaiya yeah so feeling of relationship basically i would say here okay feeling of relationship which is born out of this understanding of coexistence and the harmony and the participation in the larger order mm ओके okay, ओके okay, भैया यस नमस्ते सर नमस्ते सभी को राइट फीलिंग and even sometimes i miss that part uh, i continue for some time with a position yes uh, but then the shifts are possible in one of the relationship i could see uh, that these fluctuations were there um, and uh, the trouble is now because of my earlier uh, mistakes out of an awareness uh, the person is now not ready even to talk to me or uh, is not ready to reply over messages also um and uh, i i am not finding it nice to uh, stay like this without talking and also i am concerned about uh, what they must be going through and uh, want to help myself and them uh, but that communication channel is completely closed so uh, now my question is 
uh, we have thought of uh, like we have heard of uh, this way that we keep sending uh, good wishes for that person uh, how much that works that is my question sir yeah so the interesting thing is that no channel is completely closed it is always open so you don't have to worry about that part that it is completely closed okay. now what do i do given this situation that mm -hmm. there seems to be a stalemate complete block what do i do now i have to prepare myself as you said now i can see that there are you know there have been mistakes on my part in the past okay. and the other person is hurt about it and even if there is no mistake from my part there person, the other person can be hurt because of his own sanskar I mean, you do something and the expectation of the other person is that, okay, you do right thing, but do it in one particular way or mm -hmm. present it in one particular way, right? Or if the other person is shouting at you, okay, you should not respond, you know, to it. You have just should listen. So all these assumptions can be there, but it can be either way that you have made some mistakes or something has happened, something, you know, some time. And the other person is accumulating it. Now, what do I do? From my side, I have to set things right. I have to make sure that I have right understanding about myself, I have right understanding about the other, and I have this feeling of relationship for the other all the time. So if I do this, and if I am ready, then this channel is not blocked completely. Okay. I can find out ways. But if it is taking time, it is fine. If I do not have the wrong feeling from my side, it is not creating unhappiness to me. The problem is when I also have the wrong feeling, I get into trouble, number one. Number two, if I have the right feeling and I am in harmony and happiness, then I will be looking for the opportunity when this interaction can be started, this communication you know, can be you know, initiated. And when I initiate this, and if the other person reacts, that is the crucial time when I have to check whether I also get into reaction or I am able to ensure that feeling of relationship for the other. And all my thought is in relation to how give you know rest to the other, how help with the other. How help the other to get relaxed, right? Come out of his reaction. That is the best time. So if we are, are able to ensure the right feeling there and respond properly, then things will start improving. then things will start improving. And that option is always available. But from my side, I can ensure the right understanding and right feeling and therefore I can be in a state of harmony and happiness that nobody is taking away from me. So first I do that and then I look for the right context or right opportunity where I can, you know, interact with the other person. Sir, I have two questions. 
first yeah. how, how to un- uh, we concisely and precisely understand relationship yeah. with everything including yeah. human being and other things yeah. yeah this is the question no if you want to make it very concise the answer is that we should be able to see that we are already in relationship with every unit in existence by yes. way of yes. coexistence we are already in relationship with every unit in existence whether it is consciousness or material yeah yeah in other okay. words we we are in coexistence we are already in coexistence we only have to understand it so this is one thing yeah. second thing is that if i understand this and if i have this feeling in me then it leads to harmony and happiness within me yes this is second important thing about relationship yes third is that if i have this right feeling in me that is feeling of relationship then all my thought all my expectations will be in the line of how to fulfill this relationship with the other my behavior will also be in accordance with this feeling of relationship yes yes so i said three thing if i have the right understanding that is understanding of coexistence then i feel and i can see that i am related to everything every unit yes hmm. if i can see this then i have the feeling of relationship for every unit hmm. if i have the feeling of relationship my thought and expectation will also be in line with this feeling of relationship hmm then fourth thing i said my behavior will also be in accordance with this feeling of relationship yeah yeah yes and so my second is, question is yes. yeah so this second is second question is, is what is there for yeah, the yeah. relationship with human being as well as with rest of nature yes yes thank you second second question that uh, to to know the fine line between knowing and assuming yeah yeah yes. fine line is very simple am i able to see it directly if i am able to see it directly i know it if i am not able to see it directly and i am able to accept it or deduce it without directly seeing it then it is an assumption yeah yeah i'll take the example that you know we have been talking about this yes coexistence of self and body right this question yeah. is there and you keep listening to it and keep thinking of it it seems logical right hmm. so there must be not only body so this is one way step second is that i start observing the self directly i start observing the imagined self right and i can see that yes it is there Hmm. so there is a big difference when i have somehow concluded that the self is there without directly seeing it is one thing and when hmm. i am able to see the self directly so that is the difference between knowing and assuming okay sir very fine so thank you thank going you. through exercise 1 2 going yeah. through exercise 2 we are trying to see the self directly and also see the interaction between the self and the body directly 
So we are trying to know rather than assume. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. If you look at this slide, which talks about human being as coexistence of self and body. Right. It is a very important slide. In fact, if you look at the whole uh, uh, content of UHV, this is a very major shift okay, in our way of looking at our own self. So till now we thought that we are the body. Now we are trying to explore this fact that we are not just the body, but coexistence of self and the body. The body is there too, but self is also there. The material part is there and the consciousness part is there. And we can look into these two directly and verify for ourselves that yes, both the body is there and the self is there and a human being is coexistence of the self and the body. So very important, you know, uh, observation. So we have been discussing about this in EHB2 course, EHB1 first and then EHB2. And now what we are doing in morning session is very significant, very important. What Devi Prasadji was just asking, what is the difference between knowing and assuming? So through EHB2, EHB1, we were able to deduce or reach to a conclusion that it seems true that we are not just the body. There is something more than the body, something more than the material. There is some role of consciousness in our existence. And therefore, it was seeming plausible that we are the coexistence of self and body. But we have not seen the self. We have not seen the interaction with the body and all that directly. So through exercise one and two, we are now trying to see the self directly. We are trying to see the body directly. We are trying to see the interaction between the self and the body directly by the self. So this is very interesting, a very major step. And that is why this morning session is making so much of difference in our life. Because now we are able to see directly our own self. We are able to see the self. We are able to see the activities of the self. We are able to see the imagination that is going on, the desire, thought, and expectation in the self. The desire which is in the form of feeling, we are able to see. We are also able to see that depending upon the feeling that we have, we are in a state of harmony or disharmony, happiness or unhappiness. We can also see that when the feeling is a feeling which is naturally acceptable to me, I am in a state of harmony and happiness. If this feeling is not naturally acceptable to me, then I am in a state of disharmony and unhappiness. So all this I can now see directly through exercise one and exercise two, particularly exercise one. So very significant. 
initially i was going by the assumption that i am the body now through morning session we are trying to observe these things directly we are trying to observe this self by the self in exercise one and then we are trying to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body through the exercise two so all these observations that was made in qhp one and two about the self and about the body in terms of its need in terms of its activities in terms of its response right all those things can now be directly observed by the self and that is what we are trying to do in exercise 2 so we are trying to move from assuming that we are not just the body but coexistence of self and the body from there we are trying to move to know that we are not just the body to know that we are the self and the body and the coexistence of the two and if we continue to observe the self and the body directly we can also observe that in all this interaction with the body it is the self which is taking the decision the body is only used as an instrument so whenever there is a transaction between the self and the body this transaction is in the form of instruction to the body or the self reading some sensation from the body this is the interaction but both this transaction of information between the self and the body is decided by the self and not by the body so such important observations can be directly made by the self regarding itself and regarding its interaction with the body so i can know these things which i had concluded by way of you know some inference some logic some suggestions from outside now i am able to see them directly now i am able to see them directly and know them so i self directly exercise 2 is very significant the body directly and the interaction between the self and the body and of course interaction with the whole world exercise 2 i can see my interaction or interaction of the self with the body i can also see the interaction with the world around with the other human being as well as with the rest of nature so very very significant right it is a life changing kind of effort and i feel that this is the reason why this morning session exercise 1 and 2 is making so much of difference in our own life and also friends in our interaction with other members of the family with the rest of nature so this is one observation which i wanted to make regarding exercise 1 and exercise 2 yes if there is any question on this observation we have 5 minutes i can respond to it uh, sir i was discussing yesterday with kumar bhaiya uh, yes. regarding uh, sanskar and competence yes. so like we discussed uh, 
transfer may be based on knowing and may, may be based on assuming and competence the current level of mind with which you can see harmony relationship and coexistence so yeah. uh, sanskar triggers competence or competence improves the sanskar means how can we see that relationship yeah the way you have defined competence like when you say competence then it will include your sanskar and if you go still above your understanding your sanskar your feeling your thought all that will be included in your competence right for example if you have a sanskar of being in relationship being in harmony then whenever you interact with somebody you will have a feeling of relationship with the other person right and when you have this feeling of relationship you will always think in terms of how to fulfill that relationship and one of the aspect could be communicating with the other person now when you are trying to communicate with the other person then you must have the knowledge of that language right now if you do not have the practice of that language then what will happen then you will not be able to share with the other you will not be able to come you know communicate so you will say that okay i have a good sanskar i have a good feeling i am thinking about how to fulfill relationship but because of my lack of the use of that language i am not able to communicate the sanskar is okay the feeling is okay but that competence is not there because of not being acquainted with that language and this language is part of this imagination isn't it so i am not used to that language i said competence will include sanskar and your imagination all together yeah that is what i had to say ji ji thank you namaste bhaiya namaste to all namaste namaste uh bhaiya uh before i start this uhv journey i thought that uh the uh, self and the body the self i thought it is a pran pran is there inside the body so when the pran is go out the body, we called it as a dead body after i joined the thv i understood that self is a conscious unit and the body is a the material unit and both are coexist and uh, the coexistence when i uh, i understood till this uh, today uh, Uh, that uh, for example the pen pen is a material and i am a cell i use that pen whenever i want to write and whenever i don't want to write or use it i keep it away or keep it aside so like that the cell uh, it is not inside that body it use that body whenever it is needed and whenever it is not needed it get it kept aside Uh, that much i understood then how it's there in the body how it is connected with the body that that word <laughs> that link i am not getting sir yeah that is true yeah that is true that you have assumed these things but you do not have the direct observation of it yes yeah, so that is what we are trying to do in exercise 1 and exercise 2 mm mm-hmm. like exercise 2 now we are trying to work and see mm. how we are interacting with the body mm. okay mm. like as you said when i want to use this body 
I give some instruction to the body. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of this sensation taking place in the body. I don't read all of them, but some of mm -hmm. them I feel important. So I read those sensations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that trend I, I... Yeah, so all this now we can directly observe and see. Mm -hmm. Number one, we wanted to see that we are there as self. In exercise mm -hmm. one, that is what we did. Mm -hmm. Now with the background that we are the self, now mm -hmm. we are interacting with the body. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to understand how this interaction mm -hmm. is taking place in the body, with the body. Mm -hmm. So the interaction between the self and the body is what we are trying to understand through exercise two. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we will do that in exercise two, step mm -hmm. one, two, three, all those things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we will see that, you know, whenever we feel like making use of the body, we make use of the body. Mm -hmm. Right? When we don't feel like making use of the body, the body anyway, some activity in the body is going on, but I'm not involved. Yeah. But... And if we observe this very consistently, we will realize that hardly 1% of the time we are interacting with the body. Yeah, but most of the time I am not aware about my body. Yes. I am involved in the thought process only. Yes. Uh, yeah. Most of the time I am busy with myself. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yes. That I also can be able to see. Uh, All this we will be able to see by direct mm. observation. Mm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very nice.